to Space Engineers and uh, today I'm just going to be showing you uh, basically how to drive the Bear Land Cruiser and it kind of occurred to me that obviously this is a very different concept so I figured a lot of people probably are out crashing these things and then wondering oh what the heck is this thing supposed to do so uh, if you look at it from first glance of course it looks like a rolling vehicle but then obviously you're going to come back here you're going to see these sideways ones and you're going to wonder, well, what the heck is all that about? And if you try to drive it like a normal vehicle, it's just not going to work. So uh, this was based on the uh, skimmer technology, which was developed by Whiplash141, who's also responsible for the turret script up in here. And uh, I don't think that he has his uh, skimmer on the workshop. When I looked, I could not find it. So Whiplash, if you're watching this, uh, feel free to correct me, and I will put that link in the description. But other than that, I believe that this might be the only skimmer on the workshop. Of course, his was a small grid, whereas this one is a large one, and his being a small one, you can take it pretty much anywhere, tackle pretty much any terrain, this uh, not so much. Uh, you definitely, with the larger weight and size, uh, you have to be a lot more careful with it. Um, but anyways, up here in the cockpit, um, you have just your camera controls to start all through here. Uh, your number seven is going to allow you to shoot the front rocket launchers. However, the uh, turret is controlled by the AI through the script by Whiplash. Um, so basically, if you set all the stuff to your faction, it's going to automatically target your enemies just like any typical normal AI turret. Uh, and in the second tab is uh, your friction controls. Now this is completely essential to your piloting. Uh, one thing is you can turn the friction all the way up. That basically will act as your parking brake, which will allow you to turn the engines off, which allows you to uh, recharge your batteries through the solar panels. Uh, since this is a planetary vehicle, I try to make planetary vehicles battery power, though designs don't always accommodate that. However, this one managed to, and so therefore uh, you can charge it through the solar panels, and then once you're done with that, of course, turn it all back on. Um, so anyways, friction will allow you to turn the engines off, which allows you to kill your damners, basically, and not wind up moving everywhere as you can see here. So dampener's back on, and now we can turn friction all the way down to zero. You always want the friction to zero, because if you try to move with your friction up, then right now I'm trying to go sideways. I'm trying to turn a little bit. That does work a little bit, but it's just not as effective. Now, once you turn the uh, friction down to zero, you can see it gets much smoother. You can slide uh, sideways, you can wind up spinning right on your axis. So it just makes it very maneuverable, which can be very effective in combat, especially with these forward-facing rocket launchers, because you can imagine if someone's passing by you, you can just turn right on your axis and shoot at them. And uh, try not to, you know, hit your rockets on the nose. But anyways, <laughs> aside from that little error right there, um, we'll go ahead and get about piloting this. Now while you're piloting, there's just a few things to consider. You want to keep it to smoother terrain. Biomes like this one or the desert are perfect for it. Of course, mountainous regions, it's not going to work so well. Uh, you want to keep your speed probably around or under 100 kilometers an hour. You don't really have to pay too much attention to that. You can just kind of feel it out. Uh, but full speed is not really recommended, even though you can do it in certain locations. Now, you can see we start to drift uh, because the side thrust is not as effective as like the rear. Uh, so that means that you have to constantly be, be uh, micromanaging these um, friction controls. That way you don't hit anything. These trees you can knock down some of the trees, but these trees are too large and they will damage your vehicle quite ridiculously. Uh, which is just absolutely insane, given the fact that this thing can take rockets, but this tree will just rip it apart. Uh, yeah. <sighs> it's 
space engineers physics. Anyways, um, so you want to avoid trees and rocks, uh, big ridges, or pits, etc. You know, things that look like they could mess your vehicle up. So as you're going through, just kind of steer it just like normal. Uh, it's just like flying, except you have to consider the fact that you're on the ground. I guess. Um, and uh, so you'll start always drifting into trees like this. So the main thing is I'm just increasing my friction, canceling out the drift, and then applying thrust in the opposite direction, which is quite simple, semi-intuitive, I suppose, but it definitely takes getting used to. There's definitely a bit of a learning curve to this and, you know, not crashing it into everything. Uh, so I've been piloting this for... I guess a total of several hours now, so this is my experience. My first run was definitely not this smooth, and I was crashing into most of these trees, just like I assume most people who download this thing are. And if you're not doing that, then I guess you're some sort of prodigy, so congratulations. But anyways, um... So yeah, when you got straightaways like this, you can go ahead and push your thrust up a bit more. You can see I'm pushing it almost to towards, towards uh, 200 here, uh, but I see a ridge coming up, so I'm going to start changing my direction here, because that ridge is going to mess me up. So I cancelled out that friction, now I just release the brake again. Uh, looks like there's a ridge right there, so I'm going to slow it down, and we'll see if we can tackle this. Yeah, I don't like the look of that one. Hey, and we didn't lose any mass, so that means it's okay. Cool. So, um, yeah. Imagine on places like Europa, you could probably pilot this pretty much anywhere, because it's a very smooth planet, though the less gravity might give you some problems. Might be kind of scary with this flying around everywhere. You could maybe even make this into a flying vehicle. That'd be interesting. <laughs> but uh, um, on Mars, pro Mars is probably your ideal planet. The Mars has some bad places too. But here on Earth, you just have to be um, selective with what biomes that you put it in. Ones like this again, you know, ideal. Others, mountainous. You might as well forget it. But, anyways, you can see here it's nice and smooth, so we can push it on up. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions about how the system works, or about how to actually pilot this thing, then feel free to leave a comment in the video. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Other than that, though, I hope that this has explained to you everything that you need to know and that you will be crashing this a lot less in future days. So, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.